What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be super quick because I've got a lot of stuff to do this weekend. I'm actually going to Vegas with Paul and a bunch of other friends. So, so follow Paul and I on Twitter. We might be posting some crazy pictures of us going wild, you know, like, I don't know, unboxing things in places we shouldn't. We're, we're, we're just rebels like that. But anyway, this is going to be a really quick to the point video. Essentially what we're doing today is a rendering showdown. We're going to be encoding the same Adobe Premiere Pro CS6 project on two different systems. The first one is the Razer Blade Pro, which is uh, from the folks over at Razer, and it features a Core i7-6700HQ, which is a mobile processor. It also has a GTX 1080 in it, which is a fully fledged desktop variant GPU that's just sandwiched into a very slim form factor. You can go ahead and watch my review on the Razer Blade Pro that I posted a few weeks back uh, if you want more information on that, but today we're gonna be pitting that against a desktop equivalent, as close as I could get it, honestly. Once again, I'm using the NK M1 that was featured in February's PC of the month. However, the internals have been swapped out a bit, uh, mainly the CPU cooler and graphics card. So for the graphics card, we actually have a full GTX 1080 that's going to compete with the 1080 that's in the Razer Blade Pro. And then for the CPU, we still have a 7700K in there that we will not be overclocking. Uh, I didn't have a 6700K on hand. That would have been a slightly more equal test between the two systems, but I didn't have one on hand that's actually available, so we're, we're going Katy Lake versus Skylake, mobile versus desktop. Obviously, that's the best matchup that I can do right now, but we're not going to be overclocking the 7700K, and I've actually disabled Turbo Boost, so it's only going to be hitting its out-of-the-box frequency of 4.2 gigahertz. But I think the question we're trying to answer today is, can the Razer Blade Pro keep pace with a desktop version of itself? And I say that loosely because, again, mobile CPU versus desktop CPU, that's going to be a huge difference. Uh, memory configurations are slightly different. We've actually got double the RAM capacity on our laptop than we do on our mini ITX system here. So 32 gigs on the Razer Blade Pro, 16 gigs on the uh, desktop. However, I've only allocated 8 gigs per system for the rendering task uh, within Pre Premiere Pro. It's actually a setting you can adjust within the software, so that'll be even across the board. Um, everything else will probably have very minimal impact on performance for, for this particular test, but there you go. Th those are the uh, That's what we're dealing with here. Obviously, everything is stock frequency on both systems, both CPU and GPU. You can't even overclock anything on, on the laptop for that matter, so that's all nice and dandy. Uh, drivers, all the latest drivers are installed, as well as Windows 10 64-bit on both systems. So, um, yeah, on that note, let's just go ahead and kick it off with a rendering test with a 4k clip this is actually a 4k project this is one of my actual projects that i worked on recently that uh, is about five minutes long it's 4k we're doing 45 megabits per second as our encoding bit rate and h.264 and all that jazz so without further ado here is the render test begin So a pretty crushing victory for our desktop here. It actually rendered out the project in 12 minutes and 2 seconds compared to the laptop which was significantly slower at 18 minutes and 33 seconds. Uh, to be exact, that's 54% longer of an encoding time than our desktop. So why did this happen, Kyle? Where, where, where did things go wrong? Well, no, nothing really went wrong. I think my original speculation in all this before I started the test is pretty correct in that the CPU differences here between IPCs and speeds is quite drastic. When you're talking about a 6700HQ, which is a fast mobile chip in its own right, but compare that to a desktop variant Core i7 that's clocked 
over 4 gigahertz, there really is a huge difference in performance there, especially in a task like rendering, where you're not just taxing the GPU, but the, the CPU is also being uh, heavily, heavily utilized. Now, I would say that the performance gap overall between these systems would probably close quite a bit if we were to throw a gaming test in here at 4K, for example, because at that point, even 2560 by 1440, you're more uh, GPU bound at that point, so the CPU really isn't being taxed at all, and, and that's not really a limiting factor for the Razer Blade Pro at that point, uh, because all the focus is GPU bound. However, when you're talking about rendering, both the CPU and GPU, at least in our case today, uh, are being taxed fairly evenly, and much more evenly so than uh, in, in a game at 4K, for example. So we were really able to expose any sort of weaknesses or slowdowns with that mobile CPU. Uh, in our render test today. So another factor to consider here is that laptops are generally way more constrained thermally than desktops are. So the manufacturers of these laptops like Razer or whoever else is assembling anything, whether it's HP, Dell, whatever, they kind of know this going into it, you know, especially like the gaming laptops in particular. Um, so they might not allow the hardware to ramp up or just go balls to the wall and deliver the utmost performance that they're capable of because they want to keep things thermally controlled. Whereas a desktop, it's sort of more in the user's hands, the, the hardware is just allowed to go as, 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 uh, as, as fast as it can go as long as the thermal conditions are in place. So that could have a lot to do with why we saw a bit of a slouch in performance today as well. Now before I go, I don't want people to watch this video and think, well, there's really no place for the Razer Blade Pro. It's not nearly as fast as a somewhat equivalent desktop solution, so why the hell would you even buy it? And to that, I will say, there is a fairer way to test this. Not that I have time to do it today, but hear me out, I'll leave you with this thought. If we were to test this again in a more fair, overall, all-encompassing manner, I would want to see how long it would take to set up a full desktop, uh, including the, 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 the PC itself, monitor, keyboard, mouse, all the cables, all that stuff. I'd like to see how long, how many seconds would that take, and then how many seconds would it take to tear it down and pack it up nicely so that you were able to just walk out the door with everything in hand, versus the time it takes to close a laptop and stick it in a backpack and zip it up. So really, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's like, where do you want your time to be saved? Uh, in, in the rendering process during that period or in the travel process. If you're going from A to B constantly, it does not make much sense to opt for a desktop solution, even though it might be 50, 60% faster than a laptop equivalent. So I just want to bear that in mind for all of you. And again, that's pretty much all I have time to talk about today. Sorry if this video was super rushed. It totally is, but uh, hopefully you still kind of enjoyed it a little bit. If you did, be sure to toss me a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon, which it certainly is. As always, I'm Kyle Bitwit. Thank you all for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video.